Radiant, The Life and Line of Keith Haring by Brad Gooch is a detailed biography that illuminates the life and career of Keith Haring, one of the most iconic and influential artists of the late 20th century. Haring rose to prominence in the 1980s with his vibrant, seemingly simplistic visuals that carried profound cultural and political messages. His work is recognized for its bold lines, vivid colors, and dynamic figures, and it often addressed themes of life, death, love, sexuality, and war. The book begins with Herring's childhood in Cutstown, Pennsylvania, where he was born in 1958. From a very young age, Herring showed a passion for drawing, influenced by his father, Alan Herring, who also dabbled in cartooning. Herring's formative years were marked by a love for popular culture, particularly TV cartoons and the imagery of the 1960s space race, elements that would later inform his signature style. Herring's adolescence was a period of exploration that served to challenge and shape his identity. He grappled with his sexuality in a conservative environment and often felt like an outsider. In search of a community where he felt he belonged, Herring moved to Pittsburgh in 1976 to attend the Ivy School of Professional Art. However, he quickly realized that commercial graphic art was not his true calling and dropped out, instead spending time working on his own drawings and paintings. In 1978, Herring took the leap and moved to New York City, where he enrolled at the School of Visual Arts, SVA. It was here that he began to thrive, finding himself in the midst of an art and cultural renaissance. Keith became deeply involved in the downtown art scene, rubbing shoulders with other emerging artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat and Kenny Scharf. The energy of the city had a profound impact on him, and he became part of the burgeoning alternative art community that centered around venues like Club 57. Gooch's biography vividly paints the picture of Herring's evolution as an artist. Keith's distinguishing move came in utilizing the empty advertising panels in subway stations as his canvases. Here, he drew what would become his famous subway drawings, chalk outlines filled with motion and energy accessible to the public and often created rapidly in the presence of an invariably intrigued audience. These drawings quickly garnered attention, both positive and adverse. They became emblematic of Herring's commitment to making art truly available to the public and breaking down the barriers of the elite art world. Herring's career ascended quickly. By the early 1980s, he was showing work in galleries and gaining international recognition. His art was celebrated for its unique blend of street art and high art, for being both intuitive and intellectual. Hiring symbols, barking dogs, radiant babies, UFOs, and dancers were not only visually striking but also carried deeper meanings, reflecting his own social activism and concerns. He addressed issues such as apartheid, the crack cocaine epidemic, and the AIDS crisis. Keith, openly gay and vocal about LGBTQIA rights, used his art as a form of advocacy. The book charts Herring's meteoric rise in the art world, exploring his relationships with other icons such as Andy Warhol and Madonna. Herring's distinctive work was well-suited to the era, becoming emblematic of the 80s art scene. He opened his own retail store, The Pop Shop, in 1986, which both exemplified his ethos of making art accessible and sparked debate about the commercialization of art. While some critics accused him of selling out, Herring believed that art should be as available as a t-shirt or a book. Gooch does not shy away from the personal struggles that Herring faced. Despite his professional success, Herring battled with the challenges of fame and the impact of the AIDS epidemic on the community he was a part of. In 1988, Keith received a diagnosis of AIDS himself. However, he continued to work tirelessly both creating art and engaging in activism. He established the Keith Haring Foundation in 1989 with the purpose of providing funding and imagery to AIDS organizations and children's programs and to expand the audience for Haring's work through exhibitions, publications, and the licensing of his images. Radiant delves into the theme of legacy and what it meant to Haring. His awareness of the brevity of life, made even more poignant by his illness, fueled a prolific output and a desire to leave an enduring impact. Haring used his visibility to bring attention to HIV-AIDS at a time when it was largely stigmatized, making art that articulated the reality of the crisis and advocating for awareness and action. 
Haring's final years were marked by a sense of urgency and intensified creativity. He painted murals internationally, continued to exhibit his work, and remained energetically involved with community outreach. Despite his declining health, he painted until the end of his life, with his last works reflecting his struggle against illness and his contemplations on death. Keith Haring passed away on February 16, 1990, at the age of 31. His death was a significant loss to the art community and the world, and it brought further attention to the tragedy of the AIDS epidemic. In his short life, Haring had altered the landscape of contemporary art, reaching beyond the confines of the art world to affect the lives of people across different backgrounds. In Radiant, Gooch highlights Herring's belief that art is life, and it should be lived and experienced by everyone. Herring's art was not only about the aesthetics, but also about communication and connection, breaking down walls and touching hearts and minds. His artwork lives on in galleries and collections, as well as in the public spaces where he originally sought to reach a broader audience. From his iconic symbols and murals to his impact on social activism, Keith Haring's influence continues to be felt, and his life's work remains a testament to his vision and his humanity. You can listen to the full audiobook for free by following the URL in the description.